I really believe that the, a state and, and the Antichrist, I believe, as you said, I believe the Antichrist is on earth. And if you're not careful, if you believe what a lot of people have been saying, that they, we don't, won't know who he is, Jesus says we will. Jesus said we'll see him. Do you, do you believe that? Or uh, you, you can preach what you believe. Yeah, uh, well, here's something that goes along with what you're saying that we talked about yesterday. Remember the Zohar, the 700-year-old prophecy from the Orthodox priest who yes. said that yes. following the year 2012, Rome would be destroyed? Yes. That's not the whole prophecy. Guess what else they said? They said in the year 2012, it, because this is in a subsection of the Zohar called Signs Heralding Mashiach. It's in the Be'era section of the Zohar. They said in the year 2012, the Messiah. Now, because they didn't accept Jesus as Messiah, guess who they're talking about? They say in 2012, the Messiah will make himself secretly known to the rabbis in Israel that are watching for him. And then over a period of a few years, he's going to start making himself known to all of the world. If that prophecy is true, and there are many, many highly placed rabbis that revere the Zohar, and they study it. So if somebody revealed himself to these priests in Israel, maybe that's why all of a sudden the altar has just been built and dedicated for the sacrifices. There's a new call for the building of a third temple. Even members of the Knesset now are talking about returning prayers to the Temple Mount and the possibility of building a temple. I think some highly placed people in Jerusalem think that their man is here. That's what wow. I think. Wow. I think they believe it. And he's slowly going to start making well, what himself about the known two, to the world. The 108-year-old rabbi who left. Yeah, right. the, the, your, the other uh, author that you yes. had. Yes. Carl Gallup. Yes, yes. Yeah. Carl Gallup with right. the, the, the rabbi, rabbi who found, who found Messiah. Messiah. Could that right. go along with what you're it, saying? It possibly could, yeah. I mean, his uh, He's the expert like, on that and not me. But I'm telling you, it's coming together. Yeah. It, it, you know, if you're working a puzzle, you bring all the pieces mm -hmm. together and it... In, you put the final pieces in, it says, oh, that's what that was. Mm -hmm. It's happening right now. So there's so much in ancient prophecies of 2012 to what, 2016, 2020? Well, there were, there were those that put a time frame of 2012 to 2016. I'm just now learning from my good brother here, who also starts with 2012, that there are additional stuff. What do you think could happen in this year yet? I think this is an epic year. I want to give out today this book, The Final Pope. I want you to see the whole prophecy, all the popes, all, the, the, all about this that was written, what was written. The final pope is here. Petrus Roman, Romanus. 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 I'm not good at this. Help me, Tom. <laughs> you got it. Petrus Romanus. And Exo Vaticana. Mm hmm this is about so much. Tell us quickly. This is about what's happening on top of a mountain in Mount Graham that might be connected to CERN that we'll talk about in the next program. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Opening doorway. They basically want the keys. The portals to heaven, right? They want the keys to the gateways. And it's most of it's all secret. Mm -hmm. Boy, he's unveiled a lot of secrets. This is a big book. Boy, it's exciting when you read the prophecies and read the word and then see it coming to pass as That's you're watching right. it. Any day now, the Pope is going to issue a rare encyclical. And for those that don't understand Catholicism, this is an authoritative document. And then there's times when he speaks as a pastor, but as an authority who tells the church there are certain things that morally they need to believe and practice. That's what an encyclical is. So he's writing an authoritative document, and it is on the environment. If you listen to what the Pope is saying, he's talking about human ecology, carbon footprints. He's using all this language out of the United Nations, which are Agenda 21 type issues. That's what he's talking about. This is the kind of stuff that would make people in blue eye pull guns out of their closets, right? Because they're going to start telling you how you can use your land or if you even can own private property. They're already doing this in some states in the U.S. right now where they're telling people they can't even collect rainwater to put in their cisterns for emergency backup water.
And so it, this, what you're saying is taking place. It is taking place. But I think when you look at the, the Pope creating an encyclical, uh, what, there's several things happening here. One, you're getting a marriage of religion and politics, which we've always known has to happen for the arrival of the Antichrist system. But Agenda 21 stuff takes away property rights, tells you you can or can't own a car, tells you how many kids you would be allowed to have because we have to restrict the amount of your carbon uh, footprint. All kinds of rules and regulations, which, by the way, the language was already written in the United Nations. It just hasn't been mandated to member states. But now you have the Pope who is going to issue an encyclical that then has to be sent to every bishop and then goes to all 1.2 billion Catholics in the world to tell them that they now have a moral responsibility. Yeah. So this gives, this gives all kinds of weight to the United Nations. And uh, I don't know what the sensitivities are in our U.S. government to try to impose environmental restrictions. So that is one part of it. That's one part that could be a big piece of giving the machine gun to the United Nations to tell us what we can and cannot do in countries like the United States, which isn't going to sit well in Missouri, and that's why I live here, right? <laughs> well, last week our government basically said they're going to turn Israel over to the U.N. Well, that, that's right. That now, there's another... Is, that scares me because I know as long as we stand up for Israel, God stands up for us. Right. And every time we've turned our back on Israel, <laughs> tragedy, right. basic, heavy tra tragedy has come to America. Right. Uh, one other thing about this encyclical uh, is whether or not it will include any kind of language that smacks of Gaiaism. The idea that the What's earth that? is a living, sentient entity. This is real old paganism. And it comes, it comes from all of the oldest cultures of the world where they had the, the mother goddess worship. So Gaia, Diana, Hecate, all these mother goddesses mm -hmm. that were worshipped, they were the earth. So you had God the Father mm -hmm. is in heaven. He's going to make it rain on the earth and all that. But the earth is our mother. You know these old jokes, mm -hmm. it's not nice to fool mother nature. Mm -hmm. But yes. that's where that comes from. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Catholic Church has had sentimentalities about that for a long time. The way they have deified Mary, they've also kind of used some of that same, la same language in referring to the earth. Now, if, 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 if uh, this encyclical, and I don't think it will, by the way, but if it includes that kind of information, it opens one other very important, and this was what my Catholic priest friend emailed me about, one other important thing, he says, watch to see if any of the language includes what is called many earths. Now, this would be foreign to almost everybody here, but deep theology at the Vatican, especially among the Opus Dei level theologians, is a theory they espouse to call many earths, which means they believe that there might be a coalition of worlds, all kinds of worlds like this one in other places, right? Where there are people like us living there, they have a relation. That's why they talk about our space brothers and all that other stuff. But here's the, okay, if you want to understand many earths in kind of a very novel way, you remember the old classic movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still? Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Scared yeah. the bejeebers out of me when I was a boy, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Big giant robot and guy coming down. And that, but that classic movie, which was the best really, uh, the threat was nuclear warfare. Mm -hmm. So they're coming down to tell us you've, you've grown up enough now, but you're, a part, you're, you're part of a coalition of worlds and you didn't know it until now. Mm -hmm. And we've been watching you and you finally grew up so you're made nuclear warhead uh, and we're going to let you know that you can't take that outside of this planet. If, you, if you're going to expand these nuclear arms, we're going to toast you like a cinder, right? Mm -hmm. And so we get the warning. Well, that movie was remade last year. This time when the giant and the alien come down, we learn that humans are the germ. Humans, because of our impact on the environment, they had changed the whole storyline there. And this is what I was told. Watch to see if there's any of this many worlds stuff hidden in the language of this Pope's uh, encyclical because he is a many worlder like most of the Jesuits are. This is crazy stuff, right? Wow. Yeah, I mean, you wanna, it you wanna, is. You want to cue the Twilight Zone theme yeah. music, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, but these right. are some heavyweight people that and, believe this. And this goes what? along with the observatory that you went to. Incredible. Right. Well, yeah, that the Catholic Church owns the, I, the average person has no idea the Catholic Church owns the biggest observatory in the world, probably. Well, they are part of a, 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 an observation group. 
who owns the observatory on the Mount Graham is the Vatican, it's NASA, it's the Arizona State University, it's oh. astronomy groups all around the world. But it was the Vatican that got with NASA to go up and they literally forced themselves onto the, they had to, they had to do a, 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 an in run around environmental law to allow them to even build <laughs> on that mountain. So somebody at the Vatican was in, deeply in the back pocket of the governor because they bent rules that can't otherwise be bent to build on the top of that mountain. But <laughs> after we came down, that's why there's a third book on this. Well, I guess I'll have to come back at some time maybe. Yes. We'll talk yes. about that. Yeah. The third book is called On the Path of the Immortals. Want to know why? Why? Because when we came down off the mountain, we thought we knew everything. Brother, we're patting ourselves on the back. We're King Kong and Godzilla all rolled into one. We got to go where no man has gone before. And then we get contacted by the Apache Nation. And one of them wants to let us know what we think we know about Mount Graham is only a very small part of the puzzle. In their belief system, Mount Graham is a gateway. It's a portal to another dimension. And that's why the Vatican wanted on the top of that mountain. And that's what they're observing in deep space. And Malachi Martin, remember in, in uh, 1979, Art Bell's interviewing Father Malachi Martin, a, the, a, an insider of insider from the Vatican. And he says, Father, why did the Vatican force its way onto a mountain in Arizona and why are they studying deep space? You know what his answer was? He said, because at the highest levels of the Vatican government, they know what is approaching the earth and that it will be of the utmost importance in coming years. And furthermore, he put a 10-year timeline on it and 10 years to the date, the Vatican called together uh, an astronomy study week at the Pope's the Pontifical Academy in Rome, the Pope's uh, scientists, right? And they came together for one reason, to study the detection of alien life and its impact on religion and society. And 90 days later, when the oldest scientific body in the world, the Royal Society, came together, they came together for exactly the same reason, the detection of alien intelligence and the impact on society. These are the brainiest people in the world. They came together right when Father Martin said this would become of importance. So something right now is sitting there. Something is sitting there. They think they have knowledge. In fact, the Lucifer device that they use on the top of Mount Graham... That's what they call it. Yeah. ...is infrared... How would, why would they name it Lucifer? That's pretty strange. Yeah. Yeah, why would they? Is it because they think they titled it something they're using it to observe? Do they think they know something is coming? This year, 2015, this is an epic day today. We're, we're, we're at the equinox. We're halfway through this year. What, 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 ha what do you think from all these prophecies you've studied, or the prophecy of the poem, will take place this year perhaps? In 2015, just to go through it again, just what, could, what should we look to see now? So, so people, you know, we, I'm, a, I'm a, supposed to be a teacher, but I, that's why I repeat everything all the time because I want people to learn. But could you give us a few things? Well, there's so much. First of all, we started out talking yesterday about the Islamic State. Uh, they definitely are trying to draw uh, the, the army of Rome. That's exactly what they want. Now, they're trying to draw us down into Dabiq. We talked about all of that yesterday. And, and for people... You know, people look at Dabiq and they say, well, why in the world would anybody fight a battle there? It's like, a, what, a bunch of, going to bomb some cows? It's just a bunch of land and about 3,000 people that live there. But think of it as the Islamic version of Megiddo. Because Megiddo also doesn't have any, you know, great international yeah. geopolitical uh, importance about it. It's maybe a tourist trap or something. And yet prophecy tells us that that is exactly where this final battle is going to wind up so that blood flows to a horse's bridle. This is a horrific war, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Dabiq is the Islamic version of Megiddo. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a, a, a place. In fact, it's probably more important that it's not a well-populated area because of the trap they can set for those that they draw down there. I, I think they're going to do a bunch of atrocious things, continue to do a bunch of atrocious things. When this coalition army comes together, they're probably all going to go to Dabiq to draw us down there. And then what? A nuke? Biological warfare? They are preparing something because this is what they believe. And then the earth really is going to rattle. That other brother that wrote about the fifth... Um, uh, the final... The fifth trumpet. Yes, And Carl the Gallup. sixth trumpet. Carl Gallup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
uh, that you had on the show this yes. week? Yes. yes. Um, think about what he is talking about, where the Islamic uh, nation has centered around the great Euphrates River. Mm -hmm. The way that river runs from Turkey down through Syria, Iraq, it's literally their stomping grounds. And yet read what the Bible says is going to happen there when the trumpet sounds and these powerful angels mm -hmm. come up out of the ground. Mm -hmm. See, they're expecting the Mahdi to come out of the ground. Mm -hmm. I think something is going to come out of the ground. They're going to come up out and it says they're going to wipe out one third mm -hmm. of humanity, right. these powerful angels. Mm -hmm. We are literally marching right now on top of the very area that the Bible tells us the angels that have been bound in the great river Euphrates preserved for this hour are going to come out and one-third of humanity is going to be wiped out. Wow. And why would the Pope want to create rules for war when those who have vowed to destroy them and us, the United States, Israel, the Vatican, whatever, they don't keep the rules. Does anybody ever get it? <laughs> That's why Congress does not want to make a deal with Iran. It's simple. That's as simple. Iran's not going to keep a deal. The Bible says, you've got to read the Bible once in a while. The Bible says they're going to sit around tables and tell lies. They're making deals. They're, they're making agreements. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, absolutely. So it's time. I got one more question and John's coming on. Okay. okay. I'm biting at the bit. Can't wait. It's something, it's called CERN. It makes me very concerned. Mm -hmm. C-E-R-N. The uh, Hadron, I think it's pronounced, Hadron Collider. Okay. It's turned on two days from today, so when you watch the show, it's already on unless they have a breakdown. <laughs> Do you want to tell the people what it is? I have pictures. There's one, there it is on the screen. Yeah. This is the biggest machine in the world. How many until today did not know about this? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on. That's a, almost 100%. 99% of this audience never heard of this. This is the biggest machine ever made in the world in history. I believe it's 17 miles long. It's in France and Switzerland. If you see a map, it's the, the map, it's a circle. Yeah. It would be almost five miles across. And the reason they buried it under the ground is because they might have an oops. And you know, back, uh, uh -huh. back yeah. when we were testing nuclear warheads, we'd take them deep down underneath the yeah. earth because yeah. you wouldn't want to blow one of these up on the surface of the earth, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. I'm curious how they got permission to dig that many miles under France and under Switzerland. And uh, th this is what the, the headline, I, I don't know if it's, it's just this week, I think. This is the headline, S Stephen Hawking he called it, the God particle could destroy the universe. He keeps warning. He's supposed to be one of the most brilliant minds in, ever in history. And he keeps warning that this, he calls it God particles. Do you understand this at all? Well, the Higgs, I don't. The Higgs boson is traditionally called the God particle. And they, part of what they want to do with the collider, it's not the only thing they're doing there, is they want to see if they can discover the Higgs boson or the God particle. Essentially, we Christians would say they're looking for how God holds everything together. That's why they call it the God particle. Well, Some I read where it's what you're made up of and what all matter, I guess, is well, made well, up that's, of. Well, that's exactly right. It's what we're made up of. It's also what's holding us together. They're trying to find Jesus, but they don't want to find Jesus. So they're trying yeah. to find what, it, yeah. what is it that holds all matter together. That's one of the things they're looking for. Uh, the, the, what, the, what CERN does, that big circle, it accelerates particles in that big circle around and around and around and around until they're traveling at in just enormous velocity mm -hmm. and then they collide these particles together. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, it creates a moment that they think is kind of how the Big Bang started the whole universe. That's mm -hmm. the whole purpose behind it. However, they also 
believe that there are parallel realities around us, other dimensions, and there could be other intelligence there. Another thing we Christians already know, right? Why not just come and ask us? You don't need to build a collider. However, there's a reason God put them on the other side of that veil, and you might not want to open the door. Oh. And, and, and here's the thing. Okay. Their, own, their own director of CERN has gave uh, uh, interviews to the British press in which he admits that's what they're trying to do. They want to open a door to another dimension. And he said, when we open this door, he said, something might come through it into our reality. Or he said, we might send something through it into their reality. You can look that up. It's in the British press. Where the CERN was built, this is St. Genus Poeli. That's the name of the township. But in ancient days, guess what it was called? It was called Apaliacom. It was literally a temple to the god Apollo because they believed that's the gateway to the underworld. Uh -huh. there, went, I saw a goddess. I, okay. And I was looking at all these pictures. That's her. Shiva. Actually, they built, uh, the, the, they have the, the god, the Hindu god of destruction that destroys at the molecular level is right out in front of the offices of CERN and it's That's, dedicated it's like to Shiva. I'm going to put on the screen, you'll show it. It's so Because I've seen it and I said, this is a false god. What in, the, I didn't, I, I couldn't find anything about it because I, I need to get some books and read a little right. bit more. And, and, but you go online and type in, uh, the Hadron, or you can actually type in uh, CERN. CERN comes up with all of it as well. And all the pictures, it's the most beautiful. I mean, it's like Satan. It's the most beautiful thing. I mean, for a guy, it's like the biggest tinker toys in the <laughs> world. I mean, it's beyond the blues, the reds, the colors in this thing. And yet, it's, it's, there's a goddess at the offices at the, where they go to work there that build this thing. And you say, well, it's not important for us to know. It's time for the church to stop glorifying ignorance. <laughs> yeah. I'm wow. serious. <laughs> That's good. That's he said, I don't want that day to come upon you unaware. Yeah. Tom, help me out. <laughs> you have a brilliant mind. Oh, my goodness. You have an inquiring mind, I'll tell you that. Uh, yeah, I'm like, kind of like you. I have a dangerous mind. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. Just get in yes, trouble yes. all the time. Yeah. Can, do you want to say anything else about that? Because well, I got just, one last yeah. question, yeah. then we're going okay. to... Oh. Just, just that that's it, that it's named after Apollyacom, the gateway to the god Apollo. But what does the book of Revelation say? Yeah, absolutely, that an angel comes down with a key to the bottomless pit and opens that gateway. And guess who is the god down in there? The king over the bottomless pit. Apollyon. Abaddon. The king of the bottomless pit. And we're trying right there to open Boy, a gateway that is... Yeah. Let the front row lady. Yeah. I'll us. get her to make some notes for me. I'll use them next wow. time. Incredible. Yeah. Th so, this is shocking. Jim, can and, I say one comment here? And I knew, just John, because you, you know what's going on. Well, Go you know, when we was talking back there, I said, you know, it sounds to me like you're describing they're trying to open the door, the, to the gate to hell. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. here's, here's the yeah. thought. Mm -hmm. uh, God literally sealed and locked demons into the earth that would not be released until the last days mm -hmm. and now we have evidence that man is the one that's trying to open the door mm -hmm. and release them right. right it's really crazy it's right there in revelation 9, you, you know right? if if, if i was is. a teenager i would oh. really be excited oh. about this <laughs> because they love supernatural they love all of the 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 Drama. <laughs> Sasha's over here going crazy. I, really I mean, am. she's Honestly, like, this. I'm listening to this conversation and I'm taking notes. Like, my format is completely full. But as you're talking, as you're talking about the bottomless pit, I'm looking. I'm like, wait, we just learned this yesterday. I'm flipping to Revelation 9, reading along with what you're teaching. You're not even teaching from the Bible per se, but you're just teaching what they're doing. And I'm reading it out of my Bible, literally. This is what we talk about every day on the show when we say we're living in the Revelation times. And when you can open your Bible, read the news, and they go parallel together, these are the times we're living in. <laughs>